Hey friends, Annie F. Downs here with my buddy, Luke Norsworthy, author of Befriending Your Monsters. And we just finished recording an episode of That Sounds Fun, but Luke, we have to have this conversation over here on YouTube. People ask me all the time, they ask you all the time, because you're now an author of two books. They ask us all the time, how do you know what type of book to write? How did you know that Befriending Your Monsters was your next book? I think it was Hemingway who said that a good book is the human heart in conflict with itself. And like good art is human heart in conflict with itself. I think the best gift that we have to give to the world is what's hardest for us. And oh, I think wow. I could write, I think I could write a book about like drinking water and wearing black V-necks very easily. Like, and working just, out. Yeah, I could do those like, dad. and be, like I do, the dad one will be a little bit harder. I have confidence in my ability to wear a black shirt every day and to drink enough water. Yeah. I don't have confidence that I'm always going to befriend my monsters. Mm -hmm. I don't have confidence that I'm not going to try to run away from the hard stuff. I don't have confidence that I'm always going to go where I don't want to go so I can become everything I need to be. Ooh. And so I think the good I think the good gift that we give to the world in whatever way your art is shared with the world, whether that's is as a parent or as a teacher or as an author, whatever, it it has to cost you something. It can't be easy for you to give art. It's got to cost you something. And so you can go spend, you know, eight years, you know, getting a PhD that costs you something intellectually. Um, you can put yourself in a tough situation. I, I just had a podcast with a guy who uh, took a bike ride across the United States. Like that cost him wow. something. And I think he had a great story to share because of it. I think it's got to cost you something. How do you know the difference between this is something I've been thinking a lot about and talking about a little bit, but a private life and a personal life. How do you decide what is private that that is too much to share and what's personal? What's happening over there? Are you having I troubles? Spill my, I spilled my water bottle on the ground. You spilled your water bottle? Speaking of the guy I was who just, I was just so confident about my water. Yeah, I was like, I got water. Okay, so I shouldn't write a book. Maybe I can write a book about water. Uh, <laughs> and then I just use my, I think this is my wife's shirt. So don't, I don't know what You just that used is. her shirt to clean I up? Thought, I, did, I didn't God. think about it. I didn't think about it, but it has a tag on it still, so I can return it. Um, <gasps> you used one of her brand new shirts to clean up the water on the floor? That didn't happen. Let's just cut that and <laughs> pretend like that didn't happen. Okay, next question. Okay, Annie, though, here's the You write books that cost you something. Yeah. That's why people like you. They say you're authentic. I hear that all the time. Oh, Annie's like, oh, she's my best friend. The reason I think that is because you write books that are so like painfully honest. Like you, So how do you decide what's time? private and what's personal? Because mm -hmm. personal okay. stuff we should share and it should cost us something. Private things need to stay in our private lives. How do you decide that mm -hmm. line for you? When you, this is the old axiom that we share not our open wounds, but our scars. Mm -hmm. And when, That's when good. you have healing, so here's the thing, my mom passed away. Um, it'll have been two and a half, it'll be less than a month before Mother's Day. And the executive pastor I work with just called me up a couple of minutes ago and said, Hey, I, I know you were planning on preaching next Sunday, which is Mother's Day, but uh, you don't need to. I, I saw it in your eyes and he's hundred percent right. Like I'm not ready to preach about, you know, losing a parent right now. Cause it's, it's a wound. Uh, it's not a scar. And so I yeah. think that's, that's the way I look at it. It's like, am, am I, am I still working myself? Like my, my issues out in public or am I sharing publicly with, the way that God has worked mm -hmm. through these wounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like you do that really beautifully in befriending your monsters because you're telling the truth of what you're living, but it doesn't feel raw. Sometimes when you read something and it feels too raw, you're like, you weren't, you shouldn't have told me that yet. I don't want to know that yeah. yet. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you we didn't do that. We like sushi, but yeah. uh, <laughs> we don't, we don't want to read sushi. Like, it's, that's right. It's I don't want to read your sushi. That's a good line. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not, okay. So even in your last book on the audio book, like you cried yeah. Multiple times on it yeah. because it was so personal to you, but it wasn't like you were still in some working it out. That's right. Like, That's it, right. It, still, it just still felt. It, it still hurts. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. are parts in my book that I like, it's, I, I'm having to deal with things that I continue to not want to deal with, but I, I don't deal with them from the same level of like, oh man, this is continually breaking my heart, but yeah, this is a heartbreak that I've experienced. Yeah, that's good. All right, Befriending Your Monsters, out now. You guys go grab a copy of Luke's new book. Thanks for joining us, Luke. Okay, and this was not my wife's new shirt that I used to dress Yes, it up. is, and I'm no. going to tell her. I'm, you, you can edit that out. No, we're not going to. I can't. Yes. I know. Craig can, but he's not going to. It is. Just do like a green screen or something. <laughs> like, Here's a towel, right? It's a towel.